Hello, it's Ben here at Glide. Just putting together a really short video to have a look at how to use the uh, Excel import tool. And this video is really going to focus on, you know, what is the minimum amount of info you can put in to kind of get a feel for the software. So uh, I'm logged in here on my on my dashboard, and I'm going to click on the config menu. I have to be a super user, so you know that if I've if I've created the trial system, I will be a super user. Uh, I can also set up other super users. And I'm going to click on import clients. A couple of things to note here. I, I definitely recommend opening up the, the import guidance uh, PDF. I'll get that open so we can refer to that in a moment. But basically, your first step, uh, so you've got a new trial system. There's no data. So you want to be, you want to be downloading the empty spreadsheet here. So I'll just go ahead and click on that. And we'll open that up in Excel. Do note it is an Excel file, not, not a CSV file. Okay, let's take a look at the spreadsheet. So, unique ID, that's in bold, that's a, a mandatory field, and as the name suggests, it has to be unique. Uh, typically, this will be a, uh, you know, the kind of client code system that you might already have in place or might already use in a different system. And uh, this is presented in the slide system alongside the name quite frequently. So really it lends itself to being a kind of a you know, three, four, five, six digit kind of code. So uh, I will I will just make up a, a new one of those. Let's say test x x x ten. UK company's house number. This is not a mandatory field, but it's certainly a beneficial one. It's one you'll want to use if you are creating a client that's registered at company's house. Uh, and we'll show why in a moment. So what I've got open uh, just here is, is you know, company sales, and I'm just going to th think of a client we can incorporate, so Arsenal Limited, 0583-7469, excuse me, 0583-7469. There we go, it doesn't matter that it trims off the zeros, that's fine. Now client type, um, you know, you do want to you do want to fill this out. Type is is quite important to Glide. And if we just uh, jump back to the guide that I opened, I think we'll find on page. There's lots of FAQs and things in here, hence it's quite a long document. But on page, looks like we're on page seven here. We'll see the different client types here. And um, basically, the important thing to remember here is that type one limited company, two PLC. 5 LLP and 7 Charity Company, those client types will get the company's house filing deadlines within Glide, the others won't. Um, the other diff distinction that is important is the distinction between an organisation, which is the 1 to 12, or type 50 individual. Uh, we'll, we'll look at that when we come back to the spreadsheet. The, the only difference is how you record the name of an individual. So I'm just going to put in type 1, it would, it would get that from company's house, but I'm putting type 1 in there. I don't need to put the name because that's going to come from uh, company's house. Okay, title, first name, surname, we can ignore here, that's they're only used for the individuals. Um, partner and manager, I, I, you know, again, we're talking about minimum amounts of info here, they're, they're not actually mandatory fields, but I would generally recommend allocating each client to a, a manager. Um, just kind of best practice, I think you'd call that. So if I just look at who I've got in this system, uh, I've got, let's say, Ben Moore here. So BN are the initials I'm going to put as manager. Uh, office, I can leave blank. Deleted, I'll leave blank. Next year end, that's the trigger date for the accounts system, for the accounts and corporate tax system. And because I've used company's house number, I don't need to fill that in. Same for incorporation date. <clears throat> okay, running through the rest of these fields here, the, the, as we get into these, this color, I'm not quite sure how to describe that, but this kind of light, kind of gray turquoise color here, these are all of my custom client fields that appear on the summary tab, the tab that loads when you load the client card. Obviously, they're all optional, so we can just skip past all of them. Uh, then we get into the uh, into the first green field here, and we're into the workflow systems. So it's going to scroll through. I'll talk through all of these, um, but obviously we, we're just going to put in the minimum amount of info. So I'm preparing accounts of this client, so I'm going to put a 1 BS in the accounts column. This, this first row here, 
means uh, am I pr providing this service? Now I've actually in my demo system I've set up multiple routes uh, so it's going to let me choose a route here. That, that actually doesn't, the template says that as they appear you know when you create a trial system each system has one route so you wouldn't, you wouldn't actually see that column but I'm going to leave that. Corporation tax, uh, again, you don't have to fill this out because we have an educated guest based on client time, but you know, why not? If you're providing, co if you're responsible for corporation tax filings, just put a one in there. If you then scroll across the rest of the yellow fields, you know, the corporation tax one is, is important because that actually, that is actually what dictates whether you get the corporation tax filing and payment deadlines. All the rest of the yellow fields are the custom fields that appear for that workflow system. So if I click on the accounts tab, it's all of these system info fields in here. So obviously they're all optional, we can ignore those. And then you get round to the next uh, workflow system. So this one is, is what I've called SA100. I think in the templates that's just called tax returns. It's talking about all of the 31st of Jan tax returns. Now, I have that system defaulting to being active. And obviously for a company here, I wouldn't want it to be active. So I'm just gonna put a zero. That's going to avoid you getting a tax return on this client once every year. Then we're into yellow fields, which obviously are kind of optional. Now coming across further, I just want to talk, you know, I think if you're setting up looking to import minimum amounts of info, you're, you're probably going to just look at the accounts and, and uh, 31st of Jan tax filings so to do that kind of trial. You perhaps wouldn't bother with all of this initially, but let me just explain to you how the spreadsheet works. So for every workflow system you have set up, so, so there are all of the workflow systems down there, your green field here always means do you provide the service or not. So just to show you what that means in the system, if we look at management accounts, it's currently red and with strike through because it's not active. If I switch that to active, then it goes green. We're providing that service. And that's the setting that you can import, import on these green columns here. So you've got one for VAT, annual returns, engagement letters, P11D, management accounts. Okay. Then for trigger date systems, um, just, to, just to remind, this is all covered in the PDF, uh, but basically it's three types of workflow system. And the trigger date system requires, for job creation, it requires the system to be active and for you to provide the first date on one of the triggers. So for example here, quarterly management accounts, I could say, yep, the first set we're doing is 31st of July. Okay, now that is, that tri those trigger dates are the turquoise fields here. So for, if we were to, we're kind of straying into a bit more detail here, but for example, if we wanted to set up VAT on this client, we'd go, yes, we provide VAT, and the next quarterly back return is the 31st of August 16th. And that's how you would do that. Okay, then the yellow ones, again, they are the system info fields, they're always optional. So I won't go through the rest of this. Suffice to say that tax returns and P11D don't have the turquoise trigger date field because every active client just gets a workflow each tax year on a day of your choosing. Okay, so that's, you know, that's just a bit of talking about how that works. But like I say, if you're importing the minimum info, you're probably focused on the accounts and tax returns. I'm just going to create a second client now. I'm going to do test xxx11. This time I'm doing an individual, you know, a director. So there's no company's house number and the type is 50. So that type comes from the uh, PDF guide here, page 7. It's type 50. And the important thing with type 50 is that I don't use the name field here in column D. I use title, uh, you know, first name and surname. So I'll go for something Smith. Again, I'll put a manager. Now, this is Bob's the director, as it turns out, of my company. Uh, he's not going to have an accounts workflow, so I put a zero in accounts, and also I, I don't need to worry about the next year end. You would only fill out next year end if A, you're providing accounts, so that's a one, and B, you don't have a company's house number. So the next year end field is relevant for those sole traders and partnerships where you, where you want to put in the trigger date for the accounts workflow. Uh, again, just to be tidy, I'm going to put a zero in corporation tax, so I you know, don't strictly have to. But importantly here, Bob has a tax return, so I'll put a one in there. And I'm not going to bother with looking at anything else. So that, that's my spreadsheet. Um, I'd actually saved it saved it as import. I think, I think when you download your file, it's called glide underscore clients. Obviously, you can resave that as I did, you know, kind of somewhere else. 
but let's just hit save. We're keeping it in Excel format. Then I'm going to jump back to the system and uh, let's get back to where we were. So we go config import clients. We don't need to download it, we, we don't need the guidance, so we click straight on continue to next step. Select completed spreadsheet. Uh, I'd put that on my desktop and I'd call it import. There it is. Okay, so that's going to import that data. Important to note at this point that it's saying two new clients would, this is a preview, and it's saying two new clients would be added to the database. Now, what's important here, if you have, as I do, a lot of existing clients in the system, if you accidentally reused a unique ID, it would, you, it would look at that unique ID and try and update the existing record. Uh, rather than creating a new one, so that that would be a, a rem, that'd be a visual rem, reminder here. If you would say, for example, one new client would be added and one will be updated, keep an eye on that and, and check it's doing what you expect. Okay, now just to point out, it has gone to company's house to get the name next year end, but you don't actually see that at the preview stage at present. So just to ha have some faith at the company's house link for a moment, but you can scroll across and check that everything else is as you entered it, so to say. And then when you're happy, well if you're not happy, you hit cancel. If you are happy, you hit confirm spreadsheet import. And that's going to go ahead, that's now imported that information. Now, if we just look at the Arsenal company here, click on it, the next accounts are to be made up to 30 June 16. That's a great, I'm glad, I'm pleased with that, that's a good example. And the reason I'm pleased with it is because I think I have my accounts set up to automatically create one day before year end. So what this will have done, what this import will have done, is it will have created, now if I actually um, Prior to doing the next step, I just want to show you that that has successfully worked. So there is Arsenal Limited. You'll see that you'll see that from Company Sales we've got the name and we've got that next year end of 30th of June. And we've also got the incorporation date there. Now the important point to note is that my my system is set to oh it's actually a it's actually a month. So my system is set to create jobs one month before. Of course, one month before 30th of June is the 1st of May. That's in the past. So what we've done is we've imported a historical trigger date. And that is why we have the final link here to create jobs. And what we would do here is for each system, so accounts and CT, we would click on that. And you can see here that um, Arsenal Limited is in, job date 30th of June 16. And it's in red because it's saying, ah, oh, this trigger date's in the past. You know, how did that happen? And um, why not create it now? So I'll, I'll just hit create all jobs here. I've got a few others because I've been playing around with, with other demos. So I'll hit create all jobs. Done. If we then jump back to our Arsenal page and hit refresh, what we'll see is that we have one active job. So the 30th of June 16 job exists. The trigger date's gone on to 30th of June 17. That'll be automatically created on the 1st of May 17. So that now that, that dates in the future, you're into the territory of automatic job creation, so that's great, uh, you know, and um, you don't have to ever do this again, it's just a setup thing. Just to show you on the other side, obviously with Arsenal we did put a VAT return in, so with VAT returns active, we put in a trigger date of August 16 on our spreadsheet, and that's going to auto create on the 30th of August 16, you know, that's in the future so we don't have to worry with this create jobs. So the only other system where I need to do that is on if I go back to config and bulk job creation it will be my personal tax and that's because I created an individual uh, who I had active on the personal tax system so for 1516 I'm just going to click individual there and you can see what it's doing it's just cycling through all the clients there and it's gone from 40 to 41 so if I now find Bob, Bob Smith, test 11, there he is. We can see here that it's, it's done what I've asked. It's put accounts to not active. It's put tax returns to active. 
and as a result of that it's it's set up the, the, the initial job there so that's essentially how you go about doing a, a you know a very brief import of um, data and once you've done so getting the the job set up um, so yeah I think I think I'll call conclude the video there probably going to do a separate video at a later point covering some more more in-depth points on the on the import sheet but I, I think that that's uh, probably the right time to, to conclude this video if you need any help whatsoever with the import obviously just um, click on help here well uh, you know glide support center is where you can raise a ticket with the support or feel free to contact us on the information that's popping up now thank you very much cheers